Good evening. It's Facebook love number 240. Gosh, I've been at this for a while. Um, if you watch whenever I come, you know I'm not doing this every day anymore. Um, and I often don't show up on the weekends at all. Uh, but I, I saw some things today that I really wanted to read. A friend reminded me of a poet that I have only begun to explore um, so I was reading through some of his work today, David White, and that's with a Y in the middle. Um, and I wrote something last spring that made me feel last spring, but in an interesting way, a, a more hopeful, less sad way. Um, so I thought I'd share those two before we move into our weekend. This first one by David White. Um, it's from a collection called The Bell and the Blackbird. He doesn't have a title. Well, maybe this is the title. I'm just looking at this and I think it's just in a different font. Um, the, poet, the poet named this Prayer for an Invitation. I pray for you, world, to come and find me, to see me and recognize me and beckon me out, to call me even when I lose the ability to call on you who have searched so long for me. I pray to understand the stranger inside me who will emerge in the end to take your gift. I pray for the world to find me in its own wise way by David White. Prayer for an invitation. I think we all feel that. We all have that longing to be seen and recognized and valued and um, to be sought out, not to always reach out. There's something about being sought out that feels different than reaching out and being answered. Um, and I think that he speaks to that longing. There's a particular vulnerability in that um, you don't want to have to ask sometimes. You want to be sought. Um, this piece I wrote last spring, it's, um, it's from May. You may remember that last spring along the West Coast, especially in Washington State, um, at the same time that they were battling the coronavirus so fiercely and all of us were sort of settling in and realizing how serious the pandemic was, um, that there, there had been an invasion of these Asian bees uh, that were being called murder hornets. Um, and the, the things that we learned about them were so vicious and nasty and terrifying. And um, I thought about them and this piece came out. It's called Saving the Hive. It goes like this. The marauders are at the honeybee's doorway, mandibles clacking their deadly desire to behead them, ripping thoraxes to feed their ravenous young. Instead, the murders are derailed by hugs. Honeybees love one another fully, bodily, Vibrating as one, they lure them in, surrounding each hornet in a humming cocoon. A few are sacrificed, but the terrorists can't take the hot buzz of their prey. The temperature essential for life and love, an offering for the whole. The communal body, its own defense against the armored hunters. 
in our cocoon of love safely distant from our familiar hives, our hug is the space we leave to conquer this novel crown. Our yearning to touch, to dance hand to hand, smiling open mouthed, singing with hands cupped by another's ear. Our congregational desire to share air, given up to patient anticipation of our return to one another. Saving the Hive. I wrote that on the 20th of May last year, 2020. I feel like as everybody's getting their vaccines, that we are getting closer and closer to the time when we can hug safely, when we could be dancing in a big space together, cupping our hands by each other's ears again, enjoying a song, dancing. It's coming. This is Facebook Love, and I'll see you again. Bye.